This is the Trigger Mark II research reactor of the Atomic Institute. It's one of the most popular research reactors around the world. There are probably something around 100 uh, reactors of this type. Uh, the name means training and research reactor. What is of special interest for us is neutron irradiation of some materials and this is done in the center of the reactor core. You can also see several uh, options, these tubes on the right here, uh, for uh, placing uh, samples near reactor core. Uh, you see the characteristic uh, Cherenkov light and this is particularly strong in the center of this reactor core, as you can see here. And this is actually the position which is of most interest for uh, our irradiation work on superconductors, because we place our samples right into this central irradiation facility, where the highest Newton flux density is available. Whatever uh, particle or source you use, you have to first of all check very carefully uh, which kind of defects uh, you are producing. The fast neutrons, they transfer to the materials so much energy locally that parts of the material locally melt and recrystallize or remain amorphous and produce spherical, statistically distributed defects in the material with a size of about 5 nanometers. An interesting issue for flux spinning, of course, is uh, the relation between the size of the defects and the coherence lengths. Now imagine, take UPCO and the coherence length is 5 nanometers, so it's the same size as, as the defect, so that's clearly not a point defect, it's a strong pinning center. You are putting in these uh, large strong pinning centers. At the same time, the particles also create disorder in the superconductor. Radiation effects are of course essential to study the lifetime performance, important for large-scale applications, but on the other hand, uh, radiation effects are extremely nice and suitable for studying the basics of flux spinning in high temperature superconductors or in MGP2 because you don't have to compare different samples. You just use the same sample, expose it to radiation, you know roughly or very well how many defects you have introduced into this superconductor, study the performance, assess all material parameters, and then you take the same sample, single crystal for instance, put it back into the reactor, add a few more uh, pinning centers, do the same story. The general observation that you get an increase in uh, critical current densities, for instance, uh, initially at low doses, you reach a maximum, and then when the those basic superconducting properties degrade too much, then also the critical current densities will go down. The transition temperature starts to decrease and that can be very dramatic. You can even uh, drive a material into the normal conducting state if you go to very high doses.